Alright, so that's, the time has finally come. This is uh, my 2015 MacBook Pro. This is what I've done. Probably a majority of the content on this channel with, uh, not only editing it and things like that, um, but actually the projects that I've done. So, KiCad, um, uh, any of the development stuff. Uh, I've got a couple of DevOps videos. Uh, this is all done on this machine for the most part. Um, finally uh, decided to upgrade to the M1. This was probably what most consider uh, the pinnacle of Mac. Uh, they kind of went backwards a little bit in, in most people's opinions. Uh, you know, when they got rid of some of the ports, to be honest, it really didn't bother me any. The touch bar didn't really bother me any either. Um, but this is the last Mac that they made that didn't have any of that, and they kind of went back to that with the new MacBook Pros. I uh, just received um, one today. I did get the 14 inch model. Um, it's not the plain Jane one, uh, it's one terabyte, 16 gigs of RAM, um, and the full uh, Pro version of the CPU. So stay tuned. We're going to get this unboxed, do a little quick comparison. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of work to get what I use on this machine on the new Apple Silicon. Okay, there's kind of tons of videos on the Apple packaging. Um, see if we can get this to go right. So far, so good. So this is a 14-inch version. It's smaller than the one that I have. Which I did for a particular reason. Pull it up here. Um, so, wow. Yeah, that's uh, got some meat to it. So I did get Space Gray. Um, a lot of people probably going to wonder why I got Space Gray instead of Silver. The MacBook that I had was Silver, so I went with uh, kind of something different. I will say just from feeling of it and, and handling it, this is definitely more a reasonable size for um, portability. And most of the time when I'm using the laptop, I'm either, I am either want to be really mobile or I'm sitting here at this huge ginormous monitor. Um, so that's the main reason I went with this particular unit uh, for the purpose. I went with a 14 inch. I really like the, uh, looks like that's actually been CNC maybe in the back of that. Um, small, small machine. It's got some meat to it. Um, I don't know that it's, there's probably a little bit of weight difference, but it's not much between the old 2015 um, and you know all the nice Mac packaging you get some stickers and a little bit of documentation now, this is pretty similar to what I've seen on the um, Intel as far as size wise this is about the same size I know the 16 you can actually get a bigger power supply this is the upgraded power supply I think they have three different options this is kind of the one that's in the middle for the 14 It's USB based, it's going to be really similar to one of the newer Intel MacBooks. Um, got the same, I hope. Yeah, it has the same uh, connector. So, all my extension cables that I have that actually provide an extension on this will work. The USB C to MagSafe is new. Um, Probably the biggest complaint that I had with the MagSafe um, was right there. Almost every power supply that I've had last few years and what you end up with is a broken cable. So this is a nice flexible 
uh, fabric cable that should provide a little bit better stress relief <clears throat> and it's a lot more flexible. Uh, one of the issues I have with my old MacBook is if I'm up on the bed or something I've got a cable stretched kind of kind of up on the bed to power it. Um, the cable's pretty stiff and a lot of times it'll actually kind of rock off the MagSafe. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a problem. This is a fairly long cable. I, I believe this may even be longer than most of the power supplies that I have, at least out of the brick. So pretty simple stuff there. on the dirty desk we probably won't need power at the moment but this monitor here um, will provide power so I'll, I'll fool with the power later but let's go ahead and open it take off the screen protector and kind of get started here I do like the fact that they brought back the uh, sound when it boots So initial impressions of the boot. The boot is uh, definitely faster um, than what the 2015 and just right off the bat the the bezel um, is almost non-existent which is kind of weird looking and the screen is just crazy. I mean there's a huge difference in the screen um, as far as like impact the contrast it looks more like uh, the OLED with a black. Um, you don't really see the white back plot, uh that you see on the 2015 or even 2019. We'll get started here. Kind of the same familiar touch pad. I would say this touch pad is probably very similar to the 2015. I'm going to have to look and compare size. I know the 2000. Uh, the 16 inch has a much bigger trackpad. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. Uh, just first initial impressions. The screen is a huge difference. I, you can't even, right now, because of the background, you can't even see the notch. I don't know that the notch is really going to affect me any. I could care less. Um, the feel of the keyboard. The touchpad, very similar to what the uh, 2015, so I'm really happy about that. The touch bar is obviously gone, but now we've got function keys. Um, so first impressions, I do like the size. I think I'm going to like this size better than the larger size for this particular application. Um, now, you probably will see me with a 16-inch, um, but it'll be for a different application. But for my go-to uh, computer daily user, uh, personally, um, I think this is going to work out a lot better. So let me get some of this set up. I'm going to get uh, get on some Wi-Fi networks and uh, get things and start an install. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so a couple of things so far. Um, I am doing this not via time machine. Um, I'm actually doing it from scratch. Main reason because I want to make sure that I grab. Uh, the correct version Apple Silicon apps for everything. The first thing I ran into is JetBrains, the default, even though you're accessing it with a Apple Silicon device, it uh, defaults to Intel. So the first thing it did was pop up and told me that I needed to install Rosetta. Now I will install Rosetta, but I'm not going to do it right now because I want it to warn me before I do anything. So I'm kind of keeping track of what I'm installing and making sure that I end up with uh, Apple Silicon versions of everything. Um, so I've got like a gazillion downloads going. Um, machine is definitely keeping up with the internet bandwidth that I have, which is considerable. Um, uh, but so far, no real issues. Basically, uh, once I did the iCloud um, login, uh, all of my password and things like that in Safari, same with Chrome. Um, Chrome uh, was easy to get installed. Um, so far, it's been fairly painless, but I do, uh, I would recommend, especially if you do a lot of development work, 
Um, I do a lot of front end uh, full stack development uh, and use uh, IntelliJ or their whole suite of tools. Uh, you want to be really careful about making sure that you end up with a silicon version uh, that you want, and, and in this case, it'd be the M1. Uh, so I already went on the App Store um, and started downloading all the apps from the App Store. Started this download, so we'll let this run for a little bit. Try to get everything set up and installed. Uh, should have Final Cut on there. I'm gonna actually going to use this computer to edit and cut this video as well. Um, so all that's that's going. Um, I will say the biggest thing that I noticed: my high sight's not you know the best in the world. Um, one thing I, I recognized immediately is normally with a especially with this size laptop, I would literally be like this on this computer trying to use it. If I was on this computer, that would definitely be the case even with the larger monitor. I can actually see this um, and focus on it from here, which is normal, not even normal sitting, I'm actually further away than I normally would be. Um, so there is a huge difference in the monitor. Um, so if you're kind of considering, I've got a previous uh, kind of first look at a M1 13 inch, which does not have this screen that's, that's M1 based. Um, I highly recommend the screen. I think it's uh, it's well worth the money. So I'm gonna let this keep going and uh, we'll see if we hit any roadblocks. So far so good. Okay, so we finally hit our first little roadblock. Not anything major. Um, I can reconfigure my system. There's probably something I need to do a long time ago, but I've had Dropbox four years. Um, I mean, probably since Dropbox came out. And apparently there isn't an M1. Now it will run under Rosetta. There are some, uh, I'm at the nine to five Mac site now and have read through a lot of the comments. It looks like it's really resource intensive. It was resource intensive on the Intel. Um, so uh, to me, this is probably just a good time to just cut the, uh, cut the cord. Um, it doesn't look like they're gonna have M1 support sometime next year. Um, so this is a roadblock I've hit. Um, I don't really blame the M1. It's time to move forward and uh, just kind of cut the cord on that. But if you do need it, it will run. It will run under Rosetta. I'm taking this as an opportunity to uh, eliminate a dependency. So overall, uh, this has been a pretty painless process, and this machine is really fast um, compared to the 2015. Even though cost-wise, they kind of were around the same. This one was probably a little less expensive, believe it or not, uh, being one of the lower base models. Um, I do like the form factor. The screen is amazing. Um, as you can see here, kind of, I'm downloading the majority of my apps. The only issue that I've run into um, was uh, Dropbox. So, if you use Dropbox, maybe a consideration for you. They do, it will work. Um, I think it's probably going to not work all that efficiently. Um, and it just wasn't worth messing with. I had a couple of gigs there. I just threw that in the iCloud and... Uh, you know, close down the Dropbox account, no big deal. Uh, on, the only real major thing that I have left is probably Homebrew, I don't know that I'll get to that in this video. Um, but uh, from what I understand, one of the reasons I didn't want to necessarily transfer my files over, uh, Homebrew installs to the op directory uh, rather than user local. Uh, so that is a good thing, and I'm gonna start with a fresh clean build and get that installed. I don't really expect any issues with that. Anyway, um, Hope you like this video and we'll catch you on the next one.